Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the Eternal Cylinder. The mathematician has come out of hiding and I am being hunted once again, but I think the safest way for me to wait this out is to- Oh, no, no, no. It's got this little island over here and deactivate these guys. Yeah, you can see <laughs> there's a bunch of vehicles- well, Actually, there's not really that much this time around. Just a couple of uh, witnesses coming towards me and a cleanser off in the distance. Okay, I'm just gonna chill here for a little while then, while um, they all try to hunt me and unfortunately fail. Or oh, that one in fact died so it fell in the water, perfect. Let's go ahead and- No, 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 don't eat- Don't chuck those away! I need those! Valuable food. Very valuable food. Just cleanse the touch, touch water, they die immediately. The servers in general really don't seem to like water. I wonder if that's like an intentional thing or not. But there we go, the hunt is over, which means I can now move on to the next barrier. God, I hate the paths that are kind of drawn out like this. So it is random generated, or at least, you know, partially random at least. And for this one, the tower is on the opposite side of a giant lake. And that means I've got to go all the way around and hope I can get all the way back in time. Normally doable, but kind of annoying. Oh, I do not think I'm making this one in time. Look, it's just right there. Oh, it's coming in fast. Right behind me. Probably not going to make it. Yep, you can hit. <laughs> there it'll go. Oh my god, the sound effect of them all getting hit. Oh, they just barely robbed me at the very last second. Wow, that was evil again. That was absolutely evil. There we go. This one's much better. Much, much better. Mostly I bounced off of a lot less surfaces this time, because previously I can bounce off of everything I possibly could. Unintentionally, of course. But it goes to show how, like, every little bit can cost you more and more time. Meanwhile, I see a big scannable. <gasps> that is the crash tube. Oh, joy. I wonder what this is. Yay. I always wanted to find more liberators. Well, this definitely is a liberator, but it seems the game doesn't want to activate it. So, um... Hey, I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to move on. So, we scanned the grass tube. Let's go ahead and have a bit of a read then, shall we? Regarding the grass tube. It is a cylindrical scavenger, enormous in size, but surprisingly simplistic in its anatomy. The creature's hollow interior, filled with spinning rows of teeth, doubles as both mouth and alimentary canal. It is possible for a full-hearted trepper to enter the creature's interior and retrieve rare, valuable organs before they are digested. Unfortunately, reaching the center is very dangerous and requires considerable feats of agility. As the crash tube subsists exclusively on megafaunal carrion, such as Celestial Travala, the Great Gars, the Terrible Crustobites, and the now-extinct Hypotonkal Grop, the ecosystems can now only support a very limited number of such creatures. As a result, they've adapted to feed rarely and slowly, absorbing and storing nutrients for a long time. They breed once every 150 years. The suffix tube is not related to the English word of tube. Being an old trapping word for a scavenger or a bottom feeder, don't be such a tube a trapping elder might tell a child that was being lazy in the days when laziness was still an option. I've always wondered, so like, the fact that it's hunting all sorts of like megafaunal creatures, first of all, the Celestial Travala wasn't even native here in the first place, not a local creature, and also how can it not fight back? And the fact that the, the grass tube is able to like perfectly, you know, contain itself, if you will, around the Celestial Travala, but not the other ones, it just seems, I don't know, like I know it's, it's, just, it's just Lord, and Lord's probably an afterthought. It's really cool, but it's a little bit inconsistent. It doesn't quite add up. At last, one of the creatures was walking around carelessly in the corrupted plains of what was left of the world. All that Trevor needed to do was to steal its core, or more precisely, the core it had stolen from whatever poor Trefala it had eaten. But the creature, though slow and uninterested in the tiny Trebon, had a frightful layer of teeth protecting its prize. Could a nimble enough Trebon snatch that prize right out of its jaws? Yes, definitely. Also, what's this? Oh, I just heard him will take a bit of damage there. Uh, okay, I guess it's just a vantage. Yeah, it's just a vantage point to uh, jump into the into the grass tube's mouth, as one casually does. What a really interesting creature design, can I have to say? <laughs> as it slowly lumbers towards us, and as any normal treadmill would perfectly do, meh, go land in his mouth. Oh, um, I am forgetting something important. I need a permanent sucker feet, which I do not have at all. But that's okay, because I can float. Well, that's fine in the end then. 
Well, normally you're supposed to use a sucker feet to uh, attach to the surface, but I don't think I have any left over. Actually, frost and sucker feet. Okay, frost could do it, but floating works as well. <laughs> floating works are perfectly the same. So, in the end, I got the Travala heart. It is not clear what the grass tube actually do with the Travala hearts. Do they digest them or somehow make use of them? A mystery that will have to remain unsolved for now. A memory awoke within the Trebum of an ancient ritual. A song at the top of a Trebum tower to forge a bond between Trebum and Trafala. That was the purpose of these structures, and luckily, one was nearby. Now, in regards to my Trebum, the one Trebum I have that has no mutations is Snowball. He's my latest addition, and so I think Snowball is going to be the one, the chosen one, to summon the Celestial Trevala. <gasps> Big spiky head. And will that activate? As soon as the Trebum Ooh. mutated, it began to feel a call, as if it was being drawn to some place nearby. It was now the master of song, and it was time for its voice to be heard. Well, that explains that then, although I still can't quite get up there yet. Which is a bit annoying. Oh, there, there we go. Now I finally can. <laughs> yeah, I think I may have been a little bit ahead of myself there. At the top of this tower, right here in this place and with the proper mutation, now was the time for the Trebum to sing. Who calls for us in this time of darkness? Who has learned the ancient song? Have our old friends remembered us? Hear our voice, Trebum. There is little time left, and much is at stake. It was long ago that your people sang to the heavens. Your song traveled far into the cosmos, and we listened. Here on your world, we made a new beginning, leaving behind the sorrows of our history. We began to build a better world, a world of friendship and harmony. But the beauty of your song pierced time and space, far into the darkest and coldest corners of the universe. That's how the cylinder found us. And when it came, it took everything from us. The bright future we had dreamt of is gone. But we bear you no ill will, old friends. Silence may be safer. But what is life without song? You reached out to the stars because you were full of hope, and that hope must be preserved. We know what you are trying to accomplish, and we will help you, but we require your help too. See me strike at the abomination, and then meet me where only shattered pieces are left of the evil that I have undone. Oh, wow. He is mad and angry. You're gonna go back up to safety. Don't die, friend, don't die. Yes, good, flee, excellent, be alive. Right, that was interesting, wasn't it? One thing I do wonder is that the Celestial Travala mentions about how it came from a place of sorrow and wanted to build like a better future. I would love to know like the origin story of the Celestial Travala and you know what happened to them beforehand. Oh now what is that? I have to admit I have forgotten all of this. Let me let me throw let me let me throw it, stupid rubble. Ah! Too much rubble everywhere! Ooh, look at that. Hear me, Trebum. You carry in your bodies the entirety of your people's history, written into your very being. A great gift that only your kind possesses. Thanks to this gift, you have been able to reclaim much of what the cylinder 
stolen from you. But we do not share your gift. We have lost so much. If we die, there will be nothing to remember us by. And if we live, it will be as shadows of our ancestors. But when the cylinder streams spill into the world, a glimpse of hope tumbled out with them. Fragments of our past have fallen into this land, and only you can reclaim them using your people's gift. The cylinder, in its eternal arrogance, does not want to lose what it has conquered. So it has formed these strange alien heads to protect the fragments. Soon, it will wake from its slumber and reabsorb them. Consume this fragment, let our memories become yours, and then seek out two more. That is all we require. Enough for us to be remembered, and maybe to become ourselves again. Do this for us, and we shall carry you to your path. Now go. Seek two more towers and call for our help. And then, all this will finally end. Oh, it's so interesting. So eerie. The voice urged them to go forward and reclaim the memories of the Trawala. Now, I gotta admit, so clearly, I need to uh, break this open and absorb the um, part of the Celestial Trawala's memory. At the same time, I really want to know what happens if I try to grind it, because it's a grindable piece, as you can tell right here. But I think I'll be giving out to Snowball for now, as he is our keeper of the Travala. And it is time to move on. Damn, I wanted to try and get into a upgrade shrine before dealing with this, but another unifier has arrived. So let's go ahead there. Well, actually, no, this is good. This is good to arrived first, because it means I can grind even more of his stuff into levels. Oi, get away from me. I'm trying to save you. Oh, there's one. There's another one. Perfect. Uh, the other one's stuck on its face. Well, okay, well, that's just the way it's going to be then, apparently. <laughs> oh, no, one's on a crash tube. Why would you put them on a crash tube? That's just, that's just rude. Well, I guess I'll try our best. Oi, crash tube, let me just... I'm probably better off just killing it, honestly. Come on, let me grab... Oh! I got one of them off! Hurrah! Stop turning away! Let me get your mate! Your gem mate! <gasps> Meteors! Ooh! Okay, I'm going to take a break from saving the world and just go ahead and eat all these since we do not get to see these very often, do we? Right, let's chuck that over there. We're going to chuck that into there. We got four in total. Awesome! Check that again to you. Got, oh, nice hunk one. Fantastic. Grab that. Check that again to you. Got an XP one. Sweet. Go ahead and just check that one into you as well. And for our final one, we get another XP one. Awesome. Yeah, I know. I know. You love just sitting on us. Let me get that. There we go. Nice. And then the poor uh, unifier just falls over and <laughs> that's it, you know, job done, job done. Uh, anything to loot? Nope, nothing at all. That's okay then. And so with all that excitement out of the way, I did find another crash tube. Where should I? Oh, there's two of them in fact. Although one of them's behind the barrier, that's a bit cheeky. And that one's got a unifier light on it, which is a little bit unexpected. Do you have anything inside you? You do actually, you do have something inside you. Right, probably another heart, which I do actually want. Can I just, uh, can I just do this? You're just gonna, oh, wait. Oh, no, 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 no. Whee! Ow, no. If I time this really well, I could probably just get in there without requiring any of the, um, sucker pads. Oh, but now he's walking away again. No, come back. Damn it. Ooh. Ooh. Can I get it? Can I get it? Yes, got it. Got another heart. Perfect. As my Trevor were all about to die because they're standing in the poison lake, you absolute idiots. <laughs> Adorable, but absolute idiots. Let's just quickly just move that onto snow as well then. And I'm just going to quickly eat <laughs> one of these. 
Oh my god, thank you. I've been leveling a lot of HP recently because god, I clearly needed it. So in the end, all that faffing about was actually for a good reason because if I grab this and this, so first of all, uh, from the leveling shrine, I did get a Clabrock Pearl, which is the happy little pretty uh, rainbowy. Oh wait, rainbowy one. Let's just try that again. Nope. <laughs> Let me just try and break onto something that will actually break it. Oi, come back. Oi, someone else just ate it. Frost, like Frost. I know you're very cool, mate. You're very pretty, but I need this myself. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> and that means that one, I can get. No, I can't. I need 10 gems. Never mind. Well, otherwise, that also means that I can get a hair. Master of Song permanently. Sweet. No, not the lamppost. As the reached this new area, they were glad to see two great towers nearby. This was a fortunate turn of events, as soon they would be able to fulfill their promise to the Trawala. But something felt wrong. There was something unnatural about these animals. Could it be that the Eternal Cylinder was aware of the Trebum's actions and was trying to stop them? Oh, lamps everywhere. I hate the lamps. Oh, I got so many mutations and so much stuff and all my hoarding is really going to bite me in the butt now. Ooh. Wait, wee! Hey! But I don't need though these though. These are just more hearts. So why is this here? Ow! Oh god! Don't burn me! I'm in the light. Well, then again, no Mac can get burned because Mac's already got like everything infinite. Oh, did you just spit poison on me? That was very rude. Jeez. You know, the more I think about it, the more um, what I did just then was utterly pointless and I really <laughs> did not need to go to that crash too, but hey, I guess it means I can do this. <laughs> Good job, me. No, don't do it. Oh, yikes. The mighty Trawala had been cast down. Was this the end? Was all in vain? So it seemed at first. But a small crack had been opened, and a ray of light had escaped the darkness. In a world where titans clashed and monsters battled, it was only the smallest and most unlikely of heroes who could make a difference. Sometimes, it is the actions of the tiniest of creatures working together that can change the future. When everything is broken, they are the only ones who can fit through the cracks. Oh, I see. Do you see what I see? I'm gonna get a big scary bomb. Aha. And uh, because I tend to be quite reckless with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some of these as well, just in case. <laughs> you never know. I wonder, can I throw a couple of those now? Well, uh, not even active. Uh, apparently not, because I'm nowhere near enough. Let's try again. Ah, no, the ah! Had fought this creature before that was not and what it. I planned. They would do so again. For themselves, for the Trawala, and for oh, the future. It's gone. Okay, so this is going well. So far, so good. <laughs> Ish. Let me just quickly grab a couple more of them. I can't think I've got these medium ones already. Got to go waste. Oh, there we go, Dan. And just in case someone's dying, we're going to eat another one of these heat deedies. <laughs> I got so many of those. Oh, and I see. I see something awesome. That is 
the Travala statue number one. I've also got Travala statue number three. Um, that was a little bit chaotic and wasteful what I did just there, but hey, I mean, it worked. <laughs> it worked, so, you know. So while I'm here then, is there like really anything to get? There's all these creepy statues everywhere. Uh, let's see, got all these rocks around here as well, which I can interact with, but I can't actually do anything with. Yeah, nothing at all. Yeah, I don't think there really is anything to do in here, to be honest. I mean, we've got like all these mutations here, which uh, basically turn you uh, volatile and cause your trouble to explode. Which I don't really want that right now, to be honest. So otherwise, oh, I mean, that was uh, quite quick, but I think we're done. So here I am at the second tower. Have a bit of food quickly, have a quick little snack while I give Mag the Master of Song. I know I could just use uh, Snow or like one of the other ones to do this with, but because I travel with Mag, it makes it just makes it a little bit easier and quicker to do it this way. A little bit tedious, but also a bit quicker. And there is Travala number three. Please don't get stabbed this time, friend. You're so big and majestic. Yay, he succeeded! I love that little uh, dunk, <laughs> the little sound it makes when he smacks it. Struck as mighty as ever. The fragment was exposed and ready to be taken. Whee! And there it is. Travala statue number two. And all this annoying rubble all in my way. Grab that and we can give that one to Snowball as well. Right then. Ooh. I take it out as my cue to move on. For so long, we had lost all hope and knew all the rage. Now we are humbled to see our past and our future, all carried within such a small creature. When you are ready, let the dragon that holds all three of the Trawala mutations call us, and we will lift you up to the vessel which you have fought so hard to reach. But make sure you are prepared, for we shall not be able to return you to this land. Ooh. I've heard that phrase many times before. They covered the lost memories. Now, the voice said, they had to keep going. To find the Trawala and renew the ancient bond of friendship that was once the pride of this world. So yeah, I've heard that phrasing multiple times before, the good old, you know, make sure you're prepared for you cannot come back. Mm, I think we might be reaching the end of the game. Oh god, all the end of my life! Damn it! Damn, look at that cylinder go. Yeah, I think it's said to say that though, I may have uh, failed that one a little bit there. Oh yeah, there goes Blue and Zachary and Snowball, be close on me! No! The Trebum sensed that somewhere nearby, there was another structure like the one they had used to summon the Trawala in the depths of the frozen tundra. And so the Trebum knew that the end was near. Mm, what do we have over here? <gasps> Lots of levels. Um, um, um. You know, priorities, of course. Right then, so here we are. So first of all, let me just put all that into you and into you. It's already given me the option to sing, even though I'm not ready yet. Are you sure you want to call the Travala? These are the only family members who will travel to the floating palace. If there are others, they will stay behind. Aww. But I don't have the mutations active there. That's a little bit strange. But I'm going to do it properly, though. Because obviously you're supposed to have them active at this point. So where is Snowball? My friend. It is time. Oh, wait. That one. That one. And that one. There we go then. Does this have any information? Uh, oh, it's call number four. Wait, where's number two? That's a little bit odd then. But in any case, let's see then. Snowball's final form has become the chosen one of the Travala. Oh dear God. <laughs> that is stunning. 
Congratulations, Snowball, you're a spiky boy. Right then, while we are right at the very cusp of the next big event, I think uh, I'm gonna see the, the length of the video. I think that's a good time to wrap it up and we can enjoy it in full in the next episode. So as always guys, thank you all very much for watching. I really hope you're enjoying it and stay tuned for what I believe might be the last episode coming up next. Take care and have a wonderful day.